being our meeting for 505, the budget meeting for September 19th, Tuesday. This is a public hearing, and um, we're going to turn the floor over to Stacy, if you will, and go ahead and walk us through what the handouts are up here at the desk. All right. The purpose of our public hearing is to consider the tentative millage rates and tentative county budgets for fiscal year 2017-2018. The proposed millage rate and related rollback millage rates are as follows. General fund, which is our total countywide, um, last year's millage, 9.0914. This year's millage, 9.8892 with a rollback rate of 8.8568. This represents 11.66% over the rollback rate in that line. Also, the fire taxing unit, which is an MSTU, last year's rate 1.1, holding it this year at 1.1. A rollback rate of 1.0755, which represents a 2.28% increase over the rollback rate. The aggregate rates uh, this year 10.8582, aggregate rollback 9.8052, which is a 10.74% increase over the rollback rate aggregate rollback rate. Um, this is kind of all spelled out here because we have to do it all in a certain order. Um, the proposed budget for 2017-2018 as a whole has increased by 5.06%, largely as a result of the inclusion of capital projects such as the fire station project the East Putnam drainage project, uh, projects funded by state legislature appropriations, as well as several grant funded roads projects and carryover of some budgeted capital purchases from the 1617 budget. The millage increase can largely be attributed to the decrease in the use of reserves. While a much smaller amount of general fund reserves has been used in order to balance the 1718 budget. This use has been offset by stringent budget cuts and an increase in budgeted reserves for contingency to better control the use of reserves. In general, we are continuing to hold the line where possible on controllable operating costs and equipment purchases. The budget includes no cost of living adjustments for employees, and once again, the county is also faced with a mandated increase in pension rates. Health insurance premiums being absorbed by the county help employees marginally, but this cannot be sustained into the future. I passed out a handout that you all had laying on your desk there right. when you came in, and it crosswalks. <coughs> the budget that you guys were presented in July to the budget being presented tonight. The budget presented in July was $109,070,059. The budget being presented tonight is $116,825,109. That is $7,755,050 more than what you saw in July. The crosswalk, I'll go through fund by fund. General fund revenues, uh, there, and I'm going to just round in my head because I have before and after numbers. Um, there's a little over a $100 increase in ad valorem taxes. That's a correction due to a rounding error. Community service taxes came in after the July budget was presented, and they came in lower than ex expected. That number comes from the state. <coughs> so that's a loss of a little over 
There's an additional $50,000 that's been added. It's a grant carryover for Johnson Park. Uh, after our last workshop, and when we listened to Mr. Romay speak, I re-estimated ambulance charges. That's a $141,000 increase. Uh, $30,000 of mosquito chemical increase that I believe we spoke about at the workshop. That's um, a reimbursement that didn't come in this year. And a transfer from the E911 fund. As you recall in the audit, um, last year we had a comment about E911 and what it was is, what it turned out to be is we were totally compliant but we weren't making a transfer from the E911 fund back to the general fund for, um, we were claiming credit for contributing to the comm center, but we weren't monetarily taking that credit, and this rectifies that. Um, the only other revenue changes in the general fund, we have spoken about the $400,000 request from the sheriff, he, the sheriff's also made a $29,910 request. He ordered a piece of capital equipment that it's not going to come in by September 30th. And so that is to cover that piece of capital. On the expenditure side, uh, there was a 13,000 and some odd dollar change in the commissioner's budget because of a change by the state of Florida. Uh, the $30,000 in insurance that we talked about at the last workshop, the $30,000 for insurance consulting, uh, the $50,000 addition to the Parks and Rec budget, that's the grant that you saw on the revenue side, the $30,000 increase to the mos mosquito control budget is the mosquito control money you saw on the revenue side, a uh, $375,000 transfer out to the public works fund, to the transportation fund, to the public works department. That's due to the hurricane. They're going to have costs that weren't in their budget, but that money you'll see when we get down to the transportation fund is coming into contingency. So you will still have control over that money as if it were in general fund contingency. We just, I'm just budgeting the transfer over because we know we're gonna have costs there. Is that your anticipated repairs on the roads that were, is that what you're talking about? There's going to be a large hit this year that I'm going to have to cover in a late budget amendment. Okay. And that's in hope, that hopefully will cover the rest of it because it's, because some of it's gonna carry over into next year. All the work can't, get done by September 30th. What's our anticipated, do you know? Anticipated. Cost of the hurricane. Mr. Tompkins just came up behind me 10 minutes ago and said we're, we've crossed pretty far past the $1 million mark. And that's just road repairs. That doesn't include overtime or debris removal. So basically a million dollars over north of a million that we weren't expecting due to Hurricane Irma that, and we still haven't gotten reimbursed from Hurricane Matthew yet. Yes. Talk, if we can, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Can we you can. talk about those funds of reimbursement when they do happen? Are they encumbered in any way to sanitation or can that they go the, into public works in some manner? The, the money that we get for debris removal will go straight into sanitation. The money that we get for emergency personnel, preparedness, all the overtime like you saw at the EOC will come into the general fund. The general fund makes the transportation fund whole and keeps it whole because we give money, um, <coughs> many years we give it in the form of a transfer in all years we give the transportation fund a chunk of our state revenue sharing. So the transportation fund by itself doesn't live on just gas tax. It has other general fund type resources, either directly or indirectly. What are the total amount of Matthew funds 
owed to us? I do not know. Guestment? Okay. But I was assured this morning by Representative Payne that it would not be as much as we were expecting it to be. I've so never so seen it formulas. come in at the level the county expects. Well, why would he, did he indicate why that would be and when it'll come? I guess from Ms. Popel's conversation with me today, it just seems like there's different percentages that will come in at different times, but it will not make us whole. And we, because I asked him if we could, if there was some state fund that we could borrow from on accounts receivable using that FEMA money as collateral, and it doesn't look promising right now. So I'll let Representative Payne speak for himself on that one. But there, my hope is when everything's said and done September 30th that we have lived within our means. I did a long and detailed forecast of what I thought we were going to have left in the general fund and whether it would cover our costs <clears throat> to the general fund and transportation fund. And it looks like it's going to be close. It was not a happy conversation I just had with Mr. Tompkins because I was hoping that the road repairs would be a little bit less than what I'm hearing right now. You know, for the general public, though, we need to put this out there. Some roads were washed out. We lost half a pavement of roads in a lot of areas. We, we lost a lot in this past hurricane that really we needed to keep that money in the bank. If any time of our, of our fiscal career, we needed to keep that money sitting there. But we couldn't. We have to put roads back together. And we had to get school buses up and running Monday. And, uh, and we had to make tough decisions that came at last week that just had to be made. We can't do repairs out of our capital project funds. And what we're doing right now are emergency <coughs> road repairs. And we will be asking for the money back, obviously from FEMA, and we'll get what we get when we get it. But in the meantime, we have to march on and live within our means. I have a question though. These are emergency repairs. This isn't long-term repairs. Where do we find that money to fix our long-term, I mean, this is a temporary fix, am I correct in saying that? Okay. I have recommended to Public Works for long-term repairs. They need to look at their lists, both for dirt to pave in BPP and for uh, resurfacing in the capital gas tax fund, and possibly reprioritize which means push projects out that we were trying to get done, but. Yeah, there will have to be adjustments made, no I doubt. I understand. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Turner. So the, the budget that you presented today, was it the same budget that was presented two weeks ago yesterday at that budget workshop or whatever, or has it changed from that point? Two weeks ago, I presented a piece of the general fund and uh, most of the general fund, I think we talked about, and the BPP fund and the Roads and Bridges fund. This is what was presented plus anything I was told to do, plus a couple of carry forwards that we didn't know about at that time. <coughs> yes, sir. The total budget this time around, or the one that was presented today is seven million higher than the one that was in July, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so the, the one that y'all discussed two weeks ago, was it the $7 million higher budget or was it the one before or was it like in between somewhere? In between, say, $7 million higher, but maybe not $7.7 .7 million higher. It didn't have a carryover ambulance that's down in the BPP <clears throat> fund in it. It didn't have the... Johnson Park grant in it. It didn't have uh, the sheriff's $29,000 capital carryover. It didn't have, that may be all it didn't have. 
When we talk Johnson Park, though, we're talking a FERDAP grant. Well, yeah, we're talking we're about not a talking general fund. We're dollars talking in well, and out. it comes in through the general right. fund, but it's fifty in, fifty out. It's right. a wash. Well, I just didn't want the public to think we're taking <coughs> money out of general fund at a time. It's a it's a state grant that we receive. Correct. Okay. And a lot of the the, the brunt of the seven million dollars is two million dollars. Uh, from St. John's River Water Management District. It's $1.374 million, I think, at least $1.3 for um, Dog Ranch Canal. It's uh, a million for the fire station. Right. It's, it's grants, a lot of uh, roads grants in the Roads and Drainage Fund. That um, particular fund, when we get down to it, has increased by $3.944 million. So that's over half of the seven million, seven point seven million right there. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Turner. If the budget was presented that was supposed to have been basically a bare bones budget um, two weeks ago or in July or pick your budget that you want to pick. Um, and then we that we got seven evidently we got seven million more dollars to put in the budget that's presented today. Where did that money come from exactly that we were able to raise it up and what and uh, because I thought that was basically bare bones the one that was presented before today. In the general fund, the increases are covered by pledged money coming back from the sheriff, a recalculation of ambulance charges in the transportation fund. The increase is coming from a transfer out from general fund. In the BPP fund, the $277,417 is carry forward money. It's an ambulance that's not going to come in this year. So it's an increase in money that we're carrying to next year, plus a $10,000 increase in uh, my estimate in interest. The roads and drainage capital project fund, uh, in July, I always pretty much just do my best guess at that because that's all grants and capital projects and I sit down with Public Works in late August and we go line by line by line by line through everything and that except for the capital gas tax that's used for resurfacing projects, all of the rest of that money is passed through its grant in, grant project out. and. Many of those projects, it's carryover. If not, most of those projects are carryover. Uh, in the utility fund, it what we got the two million dollars from St. John's River Water Management District in July, and it wasn't in the July budget. It's here. It's right. two million from the Water Management District and five hundred thousand from BPP transfer over. That's our match on that. Yeah. yeah. We leverage that. And that's to run sewer pipe all the way down to Paradise Point off Horse Landing. But so a lot of this were grants in the pipeline that hadn't come into fruition or grant projects that were ongoing that we have a firm idea of what our carryover number is because it's a, a grant project that laps years. Mr. Chairman, if Please I may continue. continue. Please. Um, so basically, um, the, ba the budget that's presented today has a million dollars of reserves in it to make it balance. Is that it correct? does. Okay. So that leaves us approximately at, at this budget year, $0.7 million left in reserves. Is that correct? Budgetarily, yes. Uh, plus whatever our excess revenues and God willing, our unspent expenditures. Okay, so you you feel like that public works because of the hurricane is going to be a million dollars over budget this year? I do, but I okay. figure the general fund's going to be at least a million dollars under budget where I can move that money over. Okay, well I understand that the sheriff's department is also a couple of hundred thousand off of budget and may not be able to give us back as much as what they were thinking about previously. I don't know for sure. I'm not trying to talk for Sheriff Gator, but 
Uh, I think they're over budget also because of the hurricane. We haven't heard from facilities yet. I, they've got to be over budget somewhat because of the, the additional costs that came in trying to get all these buildings back up and running after the hurricane. And I haven't talked to uh, Chief Quinn, but I'm assuming that he's probably gonna blow up his budget too because of all the two hurricanes in one year. So if all that runs over the additional 0.7 plus what you think you may have in addition from return funds, uh, doesn't that mean that we're fixing to uh, pa possibly pass an unbalanced budget or no? Commissioner Turner, uh, we can only bring you a balanced budget, and this is a balanced budget. But I did sit down for three days this past week and go through every budget in the general fund and in the transportation fund and make my best guess on what the blown up overtime amount would be and what the repair costs would be. And my only unknown when I finished was what the road maintenance cost would be. And when I was done, I sat down and I think we're gonna run very close, but I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. Yes, you may come up. <coughs> and I called his CFO and had a long talk with her. Well, let me just uh, give you all a little ray of sunshine. Uh, I can tell you that uh, our current estimate as far as overtime expenditures for the sheriff's office is concerned as of about 5 o'clock this afternoon, or 4.30 this afternoon, was $205,000, $828.20. Um, there are some additional overtime entries that have not been entered yet. I estimate that uh, considering overtime and the other uh, random miscellaneous expenditures we had to make during the hurricane to include uh, fuel purchases that will be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, $280,000 to $290,000 to cover our expenses for the storm. That still brings us in well under budget. Uh, as you're all aware, I was able to return an additional $300,000 to the BOCC about a month ago, uh, part of which included a $150,000 in uh, balances to be brought forward as expected revenues from the Sheriff's Office. Um, but after a thorough, hard look at the budget, um, notwithstanding the $400,000 that we had uh, spoke of previously during a prior budget workshop, I estimate that exclusive of that $400,000, we will have approximately an additional three-hundred dollars to $320,000 that we'll be able to return to the BOCC in addition to the three hundred dollars that we've already returned. Uh, this is exclusive of the, uh, the hurricane expenses and the uh, the additional $400,000 that we spoke of uh, about a month ago. Thank you. If you were over you. here a little closer, I'd hug your neck. <laughs> 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 we'll do that after the meeting. <laughs> no, it's, it's been a pleasure, Sheriff, and I tell you, you have really stepped up to the plate, and I know you've sharpened your pencils, and, you know, you keep bringing us good news, and not just you. There's other departments, but you really have, have done your – the best you can, and we and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. To uh, to coin Miss Popel's term, we have uh, exhausted <laughs> the pencil and sharpened our fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you bled is the proper bloody word. stump. <laughs> now, um, plus the four hundred that the sheriff has asked for, right. and the twenty nine thousand capital carry forward has been placed in general fund contingency. It has not been placed in his budget. He was very accepting of that concept so that once the money does come back then an agenda item can come before you to move that money to him commissioner turner you still have the floor sir i think i'm done at least for the moment i okay. might have some more later thank you okay thank you mr chair yes sir if i can mrs popel yes um the unencumbered reserves that we were expected to restructure and have a a plan to build them back up to the preferred levels. Um, 
what's there? <laughs> can we rearrange that because of the hurricane? <clears throat> I did the 20,000 feet look for you guys, I guess, a month, month and a half ago. Um, the hurricane's going to affect that, but there's also going to be, at some point or another, there's going to be FEMA money that comes in. We don't know how much. We don't know when. But, but there, we will be getting some reimbursements. Uh, we're in the situation where I don't see any way around when we get our audit, our fund balance will have dropped to the point where the, uh, your own ordinance that you've passed or, or policy or what have you is going to kick in where I'm going to have to sit down and write a plan, a plan, a three-year plan to, to recover, to appropriate fund balances, as you have said. Um, as to answer your question in this moment in time, I, I don't see it as an impossible thing. I, I see, I still see recovery. It's, it's kind of hard to, to think about it right now in the middle well, of we're gonna, the hurricane. We know, but we know year 19 and 20 are going to be very good to us. Yes. And we'll see some success there in recovering um, those reserves. But in your letter, your response to the state auditors, they're gonna, you're, we're going to have to explain the impact of this hurricane expense on us as a county. Yes, sir. And if we can't fulfill the financial levels of the rebuilding that they expected, so be it. I mean, we'll get to year 19 and 20, but... Nobody saw this coming and nobody caused it. Well, fortunately, this plan is your plan. Right. It's All not right. the state's plan. And, and it's not a plan that even the operational auditors asked for. This is just a policy that you five or your predecessors have put in place. All right, with that being place. said, let it reflect the recent expenses we're experiencing. Right. That simple. Our and, and Terry, Mr. I mean, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry, Commissioner Turner. I'll get used to say that. There's. I wish we had a dollar amount on that, but that's a little more room. It really is, and, and could. Irma's going to cost us more than Matthew did. Uh, yes, it's a different event. Um, Just the impact to the roads. Yeah. Itself. I agree. Yeah. But we're going to have to fight for those FEMA funds. I don't understand, and I don't want to discuss it here, but how the federal government can offer these monies to us and then the state get them and the dollar amount change. I want, we really need to know that, Mr. Gast, Mr. Suggs. I mean, yeah. we're, we're going to have to put up a fight. We really are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's it's not certainly. right. How do we find out about? how much was asked for. I mean, I know that it's very difficult for accounting people to give us estimates on anything. They want hard dollar figures, I get it. But how do we find out that the, there, should, there should be somewhere in the world wrote down an amount that we asked FEMA for? We may or may not get it, there but is. there should be an amount. There is, yes. Uh, um, do we have any idea what that amount is? Yeah. That um, fighting for? Actually, um, uh, Mr. Romay and Mr. Simpson um, do have a breakdown of those amounts and, and exactly what their status is um, currently. And, and there are different lines, and for each of those different lines, they're in a different status. Some of them have been um, released to the state, um, available to be released to us, which we haven't gotten yet. Some of them were still fighting that fight with FEMA to get a determination of the amounts that are going to be awarded. Um, and they do have that information. Unfortunately, they're not here right now because they had to run up for a meeting with the governor. Um, that was a three o'clock meeting. They're on their way back, but they're not back yet. So, but we do have that number. Unfortunately, I don't have it right now. It, it's actually a, a compilation of numbers because I, it's I several that. different applications for several yeah, different. I get that part. So, yeah. So where? And they, was, I don't spearhead <clears throat> that. They do. So that's why I don't have. Then that money or any part of it is is uh, re, is given back to us from FEMA. 
does it go to replace those line items that it went on or does it go back in the reserves? Does it go back in the general fund? Because I understand we've already paid for all that and it's already come out of the budget. So where does the money go back into once we get it at some point if we get it? The majority of the money came out of the solid waste fund <coughs> and what came out of the solid waste fund just comes in as unanticipated revenue in the solid waste fund and then when after an audit and it, and it shows up in fund balance and then it's budgetable hopefully for the new cell the general fund overtime that for the emergency responders for all of us that man the EOC for public works because general fund supports public works in the transportation fund, that money would come back into the general fund. So some of it goes to one place and some of it goes to another place. And kind of pro rata. As it went out, it comes in. <coughs> but the bulk of the money goes back to the solid waste fund because that's where the money is being stored to build the new cell that we need. So that, am I, am I correct in saying that? Okay. that what the solid waste fund paid out for disposal of debris, they get back whatever we get reimbursed for disposal of debris. Okay, that's different. What, commissioners, what we need to do is through our small county coalition and the Florida associations and counties, which you chair, right. the small county, physically constrained counties should be treated differently when it comes to this FEMA money. I agree. We do not have the reserves or the wherewithal with our populations being as low as they are as the bigger counties to, to wait these time periods. We really should lead that cause. You, um, and we did, you know, we were in the White House. That was my question to, to the directors up there and had my hand in the air. Next week, my hand will be at the table and we'll be saying, we can't afford this. No. We've got to have our reimbursement now or some means to get that money so we, well, we can prop ourselves up. Beyond that, we need a policy change. Right. We need, it's got to be. At the legislative level. I mean, this is just unacceptable. Yeah. I mean, this thing's got us in a bind, and it shouldn't be. No. I mean, we did our part. We did oh. it just like Larry did. Uh, we delayed opening the landfill in Matthew and got the scales right. We did everything right. And now we're being penalized, and I'm well, just, and I almost, don't understand it. And if you remember in Matthew, we were so ch such in a hurry to pick everything up to get the additional reimbursement, now to be sitting there going, We're, we did it right. Where's our money? Yeah, and you're right. Exactly. We got to get our legislative delegation behind us. Well, and, they'll be and here next the week. State. <laughs> so Monday at two o'clock, they'll be here. <laughs> Let's. Can we put something together, Mr. Gast? I mean, uh, well, we need figures from you, and then it's up to us to convince them. But th we've got to do this. Yeah, we need. We got to do it for the 30 physically constrained counties in this state. That's right. And we're going to lead the, the the cause. One of the issues with the FEMA reimbursement, and one of the reasons it takes so long, is they basically go through and audit cool. everything that we are have submitted. I mean, we submit dollar values, but for each of those dollar values, there's a load ticket for the truck. There's a grinding volume for that and a transport from that to final disposal. So that's all broken up into different things. We've got grand totals as to what we, by accepting the accelerated debris removal program of what is at 85% reimbursement, what's at 80 and what's at 75. Those solid numbers have been turned in. We have those I numbers. But the thing is, is I can go back to 2004 and it took almost four years to get the money back because still they, unacceptable that they we kept can, saying this is not allowed this is not allowed this is not allowed and they went through and would deduct out individual line items to get that number down lower but we could be reimbursed and then agree to accept the audit findings if we got a, there were some discrepancies we'll pay it back but we can't they can't do this to us I'm I sorry know. And that's, that's the way they've done every hurricane event I've been on is, is it has been delay, delay, delay. And then when you finally get the money back, it's, it's difficult. 
I'm hoping with this accelerated debris removal program that we did sign up for, that's one of the things. Not only are you supposed to get more money for picking up the debris quicker, you're supposed to get your money back quicker. Did you see the governor's statement out today, basically that, or is it yesterday, that if these contractors aren't picking up fast enough, suspend your procurement and go out and find new people? Yes. I mean, what is all that about then? I mean, I can, I one, one of the problems that I they're having. If you're a large county, you can do that. Yeah. But we sure it, can. It was, one it, one of the problems that we're having right mm -hmm. now is our contractor uh, contacted six trucks yesterday that came into the county. They came into the county, looked around, and said, nope, we're not picking up. We're heading to Miami because they can get more volume at a higher price and make more money. But we were assured by these contracts that they could deliver. We they, were assured. I, I've, already, I've already certified one truck today. It'll be out picking up tomorrow morning. Uh, it'll be the East Palatka, San Mateo, uh, that area. So we've got one going. Uh, their equipment's supposed to be in at the fairgrounds tomorrow, and we'll be starting to accept waste in there. One truck? Yeah, that's what it's a, it's a It's a self-loader with a uh, trailer. It's probably close to 70 cubic yards at least. How many trucks do we have working in Matthew? We had four. Are they, Stacy Manning, are we contractually, are we're, they wrong? We're, we're, we're looking we at their contract. Did they guarantee us a number of trucks? Well, they, they guaranteed what was required. And, w and we're expecting four more trucks tomorrow, <coughs> and then they're still reaching out to everybody they can to, to get vehicles. The problem is you're looking at a finite resource that everybody mobilized and went to Houston. And now, unlike everything else that has hit the state of Florida as far as hurricanes, instead of being you know, three, four, five counties that are affected, it's the entire state. <clears throat> I've gotten calls from local <clears throat> people, though, that are supposed to be on our list to be able to help that are willing. Are we reaching out? Is that contract? I, I have been forwarding those on to the contractor. Um, a lot of those people are wanting more money than the contractor bid. Who did you just say are local people? I said yes. a couple of local people. They, yeah, we have four I know of that have capabilities of doing this. But they want more money than what the contractor bid. Or maybe he just didn't bid properly. I don't know. Here, the, what we got last night in reference to what you had asked from the governor <clears throat> came from the governor. I was actually sitting down to dinner at my neighbor's house. They were nice enough to make me dinner. Um, and I, I checked my email. It was a little after 6. And what had come out from the governor's office was at six o'clock, um, and it was a directive to um, provide the debris management plan, along with a, a uh, anticipated date of completion for pickup. And that information was to be provided by noon today. That came out at six o'clock last night. That's not helping. No, that's not helping anybody. The comment that well, if your if your you know contractor isn't stepping up, go ahead and waive procurement and get another one. There are no more. Right. There isn't anybody. That's the problem. It's supply and demand. The whole state is is you know <clears throat> in the same boat we are. And, and the problem with some of that is is the governor can waive procurement, but there are out of the contract that we sent out probably two-thirds of it is the FEMA regulations for procurement and contracting, and that has to be set before an event happens. So, you know, yeah, the, the governor can waive the state stuff, but he can't waive FEMA requirements. Mm -mm. Mr. Chairman, I think we're just kind of stuck where we are at the moment, whether we yeah. like it or not, and I don't think anybody up here likes it one bit. Yeah. But I think we're kind of there, and then hopefully 
if it turns out badly, we can address it later perhaps and do something about it before heaven forbid with one of these ever hit again. We're, um, we're, we're moving forward and I guarantee you we will be moving quicker and quicker as we're able to get the resources in because a lot of resources are now pulling out of Houston. They've gotten a lot of the stuff that the big trucks were needed done and those are headed back towards this area and as those resources arrive they'll be deployed and you know if we got to have 12 trucks out we'll have 12 trucks out and staff is reaching out to every available resource truck wise um, to get them hooked up with the contractor okay thank you Ms. Patel continue okay Mr. Turner I'm sorry now that we're back to the budget a minute ago that you uh, you mentioned that we can't use better place monies for repairs no sir why because uh, the rules for local option sales tax uh, set by the state and the, then what we have in our ordinance specify exactly how we may use it and we may not use it for repairs. Not capital considered capital project? No, they're not. Okay. All right. So to keep from depleting our, our funds, could we borrow from the better place plan for repairs to keep from using up all our reserves because if I understand correctly there's a million some odd may, maybe even a million and a half dollars that was put in there for two reserve funds one for the the uh, East Plaque of Water system because we have to pay for it uh, uh, beyond when the better place plan is there was like 600 and something I'm just talking round numbers right. probably drive you insane being an no account, sir but six hundred or something thousand dollars we had in there and then I think there was another if I'm remembering correctly like another eight hundred thousand dollars that was in there for another for another reason either some kind of a I don't remember what it was but it was in there so basically a million four that that we have in there that's not slated to a check actually being written out of it for this year could we borrow some of that money to keep from depleting to keep from de completely depleting our, our reserves? Having those funds on hand, just like the funds we have on hand in the solid waste fund, help us with our cash flow. But if we actually put our hand in the Better Place Plan's pocket, as far as borrowing money, we would have to book that on the books, and it, there would be no accounting benefit. It helps with cash flow, but it, it, it doesn't help budgetarily or actual expenditure wise. Well, I think the question was, could we borrow against the better place to prop up the reserves in the general fund? And, you know, like a dedicated $1.5 million this year to take out, am I, am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Turner? Uh, no, I, I was wondering, could we just take the money out of the Better Place Plan and give them an IOU and we put it back in when we get the money? And, <coughs> and cash flow wise, yes, but to actually borrow money back and forth, no. We can go to the Better Place Plan, it's got $6 million in it, and buy us four trash trucks and save a whole lot of money. <laughs> That's legal. Yes, sir. Take that money saved and spend it where you're talking. There is ways to do it. Well, those are the kind of ways that we need That's to right. be doing right now, thinking outside of the box and seeing how we can get this, you know, get this done. I mean, I'm, a, I'm rather new at this. I would sure be interested in hearing all those out-of-the-box theories and things we can do different and if we can buy a certain piece of equipment and save several million dollars or whatever, I mean, I really you're going to spend like it to with the contractors, like and you, you're actually putting yourself in the contracting business, yeah. and you know better than all of us sitting up here what the savings could be there, potential profits, which are well, in some instances are no in savings sense. at all. It costs you more money for dealing that direction. Well, and the other thing is, things. you're not looking at. I mean you're not going to get FEMA reimbursement, whereas we get FEMA reimbursement for having a contractor do it. <laughs> Maybe, someday. How's that been going for us? <laughs> well, I, we, we did get 2004 money and 2009 money. We just didn't get it fast. Well, it may not be something we're looking at doing by all means, but I'd sure like to hear any 
brainstorm with me. Obviously, we can't talk to each other except in these meetings, so if we're going to do any brainstorming, it's got to be here. Yeah. It's a funny business. Yeah. Please, please know that I am keeping my eye on what this hurricane cost and planning for the budget amendment that I'm going to have to bring before you a couple of evenings in the next couple of months because they will have to be two public hearing nighttime budget amendments. And that's for the 16-17 budget, yeah, not, for the, not this new budget. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, Mr. So if Turn. You're, do you think you're going to bring a budget amendment to us for the 16-17 budget? It's basically going to blow it up because of hurricane expenses, correct? And so, I'm, I'm hoping that it's not blown up. I'm, I, I already have to bring you a budget amendment because of a couple of other things that happened throughout the year, but I need to see what the hurricane cost. I have to look, I have 60 days after September 30th to amend the prior year budget. I need to look at the expenses as they hit. I feel certain that the transportation fund is going to be over budget, and so I'm going to have to do something to fix that, which will be a budget amendment taking money out of the general fund and putting it in the transportation fund. I felt more certain a couple of days ago that we would have enough money in the general fund. Now I think we're teetering on the edge. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. You have the floor, um, sir. So you're you're hoping because of the of the. Uh, I mean, I hope I win the lottery if I ever buy a ticket. But <laughs> what my I guess my thing is: Are you hoping this because of conversations you've had? with different department heads and the feeling that you, by talking to them, that we're gonna get to where you're hoping we'll be? I've carefully forecast the positions of both the general fund and the transportation fund, but the cost of the road repairs has slid up. Okay. And I'm no longer in, I was in a comfort zone, I'm out of my comfort zone, <coughs> but I don't know I'm very conservative. I don't know that we're in the red zone yet. It's all gonna depend on the timing of the work that's done in September and how much of the work carries over to October. Okay, thank you. All right, let's continue our conversation. All right, back to general fund expenditures. Uh, included in here is also the uh, decrease in the clerk of courts appropriation that he offered and the decrease in the supervisor of elections appropriation that he offered and the various increases and decrease to contingency which the 375 came out of contingency that i put over in the transportation funds contingency the 400,000 that the sheriff asked for the 29910 for the sheriff's capital and 143, no, excuse me, 145,373, which just is the net effect of all the other changes that I made. That wraps up the general fund. Its net increase, both revenue and expenditure, is 657,827. The transportation fund, the only changes were the increase in revenue. Uh, $375,000 coming in from the general fund uh, to help cover Hurricane Irma carryover and $375,000 placed in contingency so it will not be spent unless you authorize it. We'll have to come back to you. But I'm sure, you know, when we talk about that, um, you know, Public Works just doesn't have road repairs. They have overtime on their employees. and But the overtime's going to hit mostly in the fiscal year we're in. Right. And okay. much less so in the fiscal year coming up. Gotcha. Okay. 
In the E911 fund, there were no revenue changes. On the expenditure side, I just decreased other current charges by 50,000 to make that 50,000 transfer out to the general fund. In the BPP fund, the revenue changes were cash carry forward for amount of ambulance that was supposed to be paid for this year that is not going to come in on time and a uh, reforecasting of interest in addition of $10,000. On the expenditure side, uh, transfer out to utility fund, the $500,000 match, um, removing the transfer out to the roads and drainage fund, that was a Parker number for grant matches. The grant matches are paid out of BPP, they don't transfer over. Reserve for contingency, a decrease from 700 and something to 161 and something. That's based on projects I was told to fund. Uh, West Palm Meadow Drainage Fund went from nothing to 432,306. That's a carryover. Uh, the ferry grant match, we've had a ferry federal grant uh, to do work at Drayton Island Ferry and Fort Gates Ferry, and they are going to wrap up in FY18, and the 20% grant match is going to hit, so it's booked so that we have it. The railroad crossing, the Comfort Road railroad crossing that we found out after the July budget that we were going to have to pay for, uh, the increase in ambulance cost for the ambulance that's not gonna come in, in on time. Uh, Parks library, Library's fairground projects, that 522 was, is as we discussed at the meeting a couple of weeks ago. Uh, phase one communication system, <clears throat> that, was, that is carryover money plus the money that was talked about during the budgets. And the animal shelter, back up at 750. The net changes to revenue and expenditures in the BPP fund are 277,417. The roads and drainage capital project fund, uh, like I said earlier, I just give it the old college try in July when I put the budget together because public works and I sit down and carefully, carefully, carefully go through this fund in August. Um, a large increase in uh, budgeted grant revenue, a decrease in cash balance forward, and a decrease that the money's not coming in from the BPP fund. It's not needed because the grant matches are paid straight out of BPP. On the expenditure side, um, St. John's Sports Complex uh, to State Road 19 grant project, Dog Branch Creek grant project, uh, resurfacing projects, that's capital gas tax. Uh, all of this is stuff we discussed two weeks ago. Um, ferry project, Holloway Road, State 100 to Tinsley, uh, Trip 15 resurface, County Road 216, is, I believe that's out by GPP, or GP, not GPP. <laughs> Too many P's. Fort Gates Ferry Road, Lake Susan, Ashley Lake, and St. John's 19 to Ziegler. No surprises in there. Right, but I do want to mention, <clears throat> Press, could you come up here for a moment? Um, for Commissioner Turner's benefit, we, um, and he probably have, knows all this already, but when you see Holloway to Tinsley, Lake Susan and Ashley Lake, those are grants that we receive from the state. Yeah. Um, but we have found out that we don't have near enough money. So point A to point B is not point A to point B. So just kind of, if you will, give Commissioner Turner just a. Well, on uh, Lake Susan, um, we were, that, that road's approximately five and a half miles. We we're able to get enough money from DOT that we're gonna do the first I think the first two miles from, forgive me, Larry, to, I'm, like, I'm drawing a blank on the road. It's um, Star Lake. 
yeah. to the subdivision. Star Lake to the first subdivision. We have enough money from DOT to pave that. And the rest of it is basically cow pasture. It's pasture land, except for when you get down to the next road, there's about a half a mile section there. Now, what we've done is we go back to DOT and ask for more money in the next work program. So that's where that, but that does give 90% of the residents out there a paved road to get to where they're going. Uh, Ashley Lake, uh, we got about two and a half million from DOT. Uh, this work cycle, that takes about, doing about half of that project. And we've requested the additional monies in the next work program. So we, we continually keep asking for this money. These are the scrap and scop grants that we get from DOT. And with our population and our ready community designation, we, we're doing quite successful in getting these grants. Okay, good, thank you. Anything else? Any questions? Do okay. all the, um, and I also rather I need to ask this of Mr. Thompson or Ms. Propel, I'm not sure, but do, do, do all the monies that pay for new roads and new pavement roads that aren't grant money or all of that coming out of BPP money right now? Or do we have any money in the, we don't have any roads in the regular budget, just in the BPP? We have dirt to pave in BPP and we have capital resurfacing projects in the roads and drainage fund. Nothing in the general fund. Nothing in the transportation fund. We spend what about two million a year on BPP. We spend two million a year on BPP, dirt. bringing dirt roads to paved roads. We get about a million dollars a year out of the gas tax dollars on that revenue, and that's used as they call it for capacity projects for resurfacing existing roads. And, and what I've said, and, and since we have 560 some miles of paved roads, <laughs> excuse me, that we can't ignore. I mean, it, we're doing a fantastic job with our dirt to pave, but we can't forget about the roads we already have paved. We, we have now a grant in from DOT to get scrap money or scop money for 315, $4 million to resurface that. That's getting to the end of its service life. Most collector roads have about a 20 to 22 year service life before they have to be resurfaced. A lot of our roads are right there at that or even more. So we have to devote those monies to keep what we got in serviceable condition. And then we use our BP funds to construct new roads from the dirt roads. And what you can find out is the DOT will give us a promissory note. So we could, it's a placeholder number for them to keep that project whole or as much whole as they can. Um, and we've had that with Ashley Lake. We've got a promissory note from them so we could go ahead, if we, if we had the extra money, we could do that road now and wait for reimbursement. Um, but DOT wanted to go ahead and plug that number in so nothing happened to it. Right. And one of the things that happens is DOT's fiscal year is July to July. So a lot of times we can, they'll go ahead, like Commissioner said, they'll give us a promissory note. And if what monies we spend before their fiscal year, they will reimburse us for but it's always that three month period from July to October where the budgets overlap that we have to play that little shuffle game about getting monies from them to cover our budget monies versus their budget monies. You just it's saw a, a little deal. bit of it a minute ago. Yeah, it's not a bad deal because it's a placeholder number. That no, DOT's. it's not a bad deal, but it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little. Yeah, it gets a little dicey at times. Yes, Commissioner yeah, Goddard. Press, sorry. while you're up here, go ahead and explain the St. John's uh, Ziegler, because that's a combination of different things, correct? Yes, sir. That was actually a road project and a trail project. So we're, we're combining those two and we're dealing with the city because the city has a water line that has to be relocated in that project also. So we just now started on that. We're, uh, I, I believe we've always selected our consultant for it, but everything we do in those grants has to go through DT approval. They have to approve our consultant prove everything we're doing. Sometimes that takes a little, little bit of time to do. But we are in the process of getting that started. And it started. appears we need drainage in that area too. Yes, we do. We're, we're taking a long look at that. Add a couple ferry boats. <laughs> yeah. Big swales. But I'm sorry. I, Big Gondolas. swales. I don't care. <laughs> it sure looked like a river the other night. Yeah, I, now, we'll say this while I'm up here. I, I did talk to Mrs. Papel. Our 
road repair projects. I did talk to the FEMA rep this afternoon, and he, he, he confirmed what we knew. We can only replace what we had. We can't make it any better. We can't add additional culverts. We can only uh -huh. replace it and bring it up to what it was prior to the storm. And that's essentially what we're doing uh, right now. We're probably about about 1.1, 1.2 million, uh, and we still have roads to go, but w I can work that out through the, the budget years and, and keep us where we need to be. But uh, we're doing just the essential roads, and we're doing just essentially what we have to do to meet the FEMA criteria. And while you're there, for the public that's watching, um, again, you opened up these roads over the weekend uh, with some decisions that were made that were very important so school buses could travel. Have we heard anything from the school system? Have on not. We I met with the school board uh, late Sunday evening. Uh, we went over our list of roads we had open, right. roads we couldn't open. They had a contingency plan for some of their detours, and I have not heard any negative back from them that they couldn't get to where they needed to go. And I told them, you know, please call me if anything came up. We would be jump right on it and make it work. So, so far, I have my fingers crossed. But I think uh, between that, we, we got all the roads open for the school buses to run today. I mean, well, that's yesterday. good news because I was in that meeting and they talked about taking a notepad and writing down so and contacting you immediately. So I have not heard any news. contact from the school board. So I'm, I hate to use the word, I'm making assumption everything is good. <laughs> Cross our fingers, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Any further questions? Okay. Ms. Popel? You're I next. believe now, unless you have more questions of me before we entertain motions, it's time to open it up for public yes, comment. Yes, it will be. I think Can Commissioner Turner. Can I ask one Turner, more question, please, please, please. sir, before uh, we get to that? I'll try to make it as brief as possible. Um, a few years ago, I understand the county borrowed money to do some road work mm -hmm. because they could to, uh, try to get a bigger bang for their buck. Um, can we, if we were to get in a crack, issue a bond on future income, future, future possible investment income or future possible income that's projected to be above and beyond where we are at this point, such as the FPL dollars, such as the GP dollars, such as the stuff that we know is coming in the future. If we get in too big a crack, can we issue a bond and get the, and and, uh, and then pay it back with some of that future money that's coming in if we, if we did deem that would be to the best interest? This is really the clerk's purview, but what they have are revenue anticipation loans, tax anticipation loans, and hopefully we don't have to go there, but it, it is a possibility. I talked to our- What we did, Commissioner Turner then was, I believe the clerk found a better deal in the banks uh, I can't remember exactly what the details were but the cost of asphalt pre-recession was running well the paver road then was six hundred fifty thousand dollars a mile and, and expected to go further and it was stripping us um, of our you know you, you just heard what the uh, revenues are for our road network so um, to lock in those asphalt prices right then and there we did do exactly what you said and we bought them with no uh, no way to know that the bottom was about to drop out and a recession would soon hit but we still did it and now the cost of a, a mile of asphalt is about uh, press 340,000 or so right now so you can see the difference in that this would be quite different but um, that's a, that's what we did then because it was getting up there they, they had projected it was going to be 900,000, I believe, a mile in 07 or 08, one, and uh, we, we had to do something. We were going to continue the success of the Better Place Plan, and we, were able, we did do that, you know, but it, the, the game came to us because everything got lower. And then when petroleum went down a few years ago, it even, that's when it really started uh, getting a lot less expensive. Commissioner Turner, also last week, um, I was speaking with Ginger Delagog, our FAC Executive Director, and um, I asked that same question to her, what's available on the state level for us? And um, I'm, I think Mr. Manning had a conversation with her based on that, but they, they understand and they're looking out for us right now where we can go um, 
but we we got to look under every rock we can look under because there are going to be some future anticipated revenues that are going to come in um, that could really benefit Putnam County in the future. And if we can just hang on for another year or two, I believe we got good days ahead of us. So. Well, and we can't over pledge. I know, I know that. But, you know, that's your job is to, <laughs> to say that. Our job is to look beyond that. So. <laughs> Okay, commissioners, any other questions before I open it up for public comment? I'm done. Okay, seeing no other questions, we're gonna open up for public comment. So if anybody filled out a blue card that would like to come up and speak, please come up at this time. If you don't have to have a blue card to speak. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Mr. Gass, appreciate it. Okay, Mr. Paget, Come up, please, sir. Don't run, you might hurt yourself. It's a long walk from way back there. Wow. Well, uh, I know, right? You know, I am um, just an observation or two, and, and yes, I'm here to um, reiterate and kind of update you on the request that Lift Putnam presented to you uh, at a recent meeting. But honestly, I have been uh, appearing before judges, juries, boards, commissions, groups, whatever, trying to uh, ask for something or some consideration. And I think this is about the worst possible time <laughs> that uh, it is for someone, anyone, uh, to appear and ask that you somehow try to find some monies, no matter how worthwhile the cause is, within your budget. And I can appreciate, you know, uh, the challenge that you're, you're confronted with, and here we are literally on the heels of a storm. Um, but still, I, I want you just to seriously consider, and I know you will, our earlier request uh, that you provide a donation or a grant uh, to lift Putnam to help uh, needy children attend our full year, full day pre-K program. And I realize a little controversy apparently has developed over that issue. And I can very briefly bring you up to date on an, on an element uh, of concern that's been expressed. Um, let me make this observation. Uh, this storm is devastating. I mean, it is truly, obviously, it is officially a disaster. Uh, in the words of all sorts of governmental agencies and all of us, all we have to do is walk outside and see what's happening. You've been all over the county from end to end and you've seen the bridges and the roads and the problems in South Putnam and the Wallachia and Sportsman's. You've seen it. You know it's there and you know it's there much better than the average citizen does but i would remind all of us that this storm has passed and we will recover from it it's painful we will have another one and we will experience the same thing but it's not the only storm obviously that we are fighting in putnam county we've had silent storms if you will are much less visible much less physically catastrophic storms that have been really a cancer on our quality of life here. And I'm speaking again of poverty, poor health, sickness, and underperforming or low performing schools. Um, before this storm came about, and, and please, I am not minimizing the severity of the storm. I'm just trying to be factual in some regards. The Department of Education, the state of Florida said, Putnam County, you have an educational emergency, officially. That is a legal title. And I think I shared with you that an educational emergency exists in a school district when you have just one school 
that is either according to the Department of Education a D or an F school. We have 18 schools in Putnam County, public schools, not counting charter schools. Nine of them, nine of them are on the verge of, of failure, meaning they have Department of Education grades of D or F. It's the worst in the state. You know our graduation rate, you know all the things that I talked with you about. You know, our program, you know, has a, a short-term mission, if you will, and that is this year we've enrolled 101 kids from, from needy families um, in our program, and they are in the classroom today, and that is four-year-old kids. We focus entirely on the public school system. Our fundraising efforts and our volunteerism, if you will, is all channeled for four-year-old kids in the public school system. I'm not being the least bit critical of other organizations and other entities that also provide child care and early learning opportunities such as Head Start such as daycare centers, such as um, home schooling, if you will, um, for kids. Those other organizations focus on uh, ages from birth to age 13. Again, we are focusing our energies entirely on the Putnam County school system because our long-term plan is if we can get these kids from these real needy backgrounds into school and give them an extra full year of school, not a half a year, but a full year, that's going to enhance their chance to succeed. That's going to enhance their chances of passing the uh, kindergarten readiness test. Sixty percent of our kids in Putnam County go to the kindergarten and take the kindergarten reading this test, which is a statewide exam, and they fail. And then I shared this with you before, and I apologize for being repetitive. Obviously, I'm a little passionate about this. They get on to the third grade, and they take the third grade reading statewide assessment test, and guess what? 60% of them fail. And these are the kids that fall behind, stay behind, <coughs> drop out, there's, that's why we have a, the worst or next to worst graduation rate in the state. So our plan, and it's been criticized somewhat, but our plan is to cut through as much red tape as possible and let these kids from these needy families enroll in our program and we pay the money directly to the school system. We don't pay it to the family. We didn't fall off that wagon, you know, fortunately. Um, and what we do, we pay the other half of the cost. The state pays half of it, and we pick up the other half for the people that can't afford it. If you can afford it, you don't qualify. So, you know, I have already, I said, in the do not, Jim, get up there and say the same thing you told them before, and I've about done that. But... <clears throat> I just hope that you can keep us, keep us in the process, if you will, during these really tough times. I can see an opportunity here for us because what we're trying to do, as I told you before, you know, is we're trying to build a pro forma or a portfolio where we can take certain information to outfits such as Gates, such as the Bush Foundation, to get an endowment for Putnam County. So it will be self-sustaining and then eventually through an endowment, we can have every needy four-year-old child in this county in public school for an extra year. And that's not gonna hurt Head Start. That's not gonna hurt anybody. That's gonna focus though on our public school system, which frankly, um, our neighbors, our, our good neighbors, you know, other counties around us, 
I know for a fact, and you do too, that they use our misfortune in Putnam County as a recruiting tool, and I probably would too. You know, I'd say, hey, you don't want to go to Putnam County. Come over here. We got the best schools. We're the richest. We're the smartest. Putnam County, have you checked? They got the worst school system in the state of Florida. Oh, really? I mean, hey, it's the, the uh, dark side of human nature, but it's, it's being used against us, and we want to break that cycle. And education, I think, is maybe one of the best opportunities that we have. It's going to be a long haul, but I was just thinking as, as I was listening to your discussion and saying, Lord, I have to follow on this disaster and ask for some money, even for a very good cause. But I also thought, wouldn't it be one, give me a wonderful opportunity to go to the Gates people and the Bush people and the people that can get us an endowment and say, let me tell you something about the kind of people and leadership that we have in Putnam County. You know, in the most difficult financial time that this county has experienced in a long, long time, literally on the heels of a hurricane, they said, we're going to do something just to show our commitment and our sacrifice to be part of a plan to change things. So if you would, just keep us in your thoughts as you begin to finalize your budget. Technically, I don't know if we're in or out or being considered, but our thought is the same. You know, uh, help us help Putnam County. Let's, let's, let's partner, if you will. The issue arose. Um, I was not aware of it, but I've become aware of it, that a grant such as we've requested might result in a loss of the match waiver for Putnam County. Well, you know, I've read some information that has been circulated. Uh, I don't know whether to call that a threat. Maybe that's not quite fair, but it's certainly an intimidating thought. And I've been on the phone with Tallahassee. I have shared with them, um, and these are people that know the answer to that question. These are the people that have the authority to speak on the issue. I've explained the scenario to them, and I have been told verbally, and literally a man came out of his home, which was flooded with two feet of water in it, and called me back about this during the storm. And he said, Jim, that alone will not result in a waiver loss to Putnam County. He said, and just think about it, and these are people in education. Should the county give you that money, the money is going to go right into the school system for early education and early learning, and that will not result in a waiver, I mean a loss of the waiver that you have experienced for 15 years. And he said, we need to get you something in writing. And he said, send me what you've got, I've done that. He's acknowledged it. Uh, it's going to take some time. Uh, so I can't guarantee you here today what the answer to that question is, but I can share with you what I have been told by people that know the issue. And I've been told that that will be reduced to writing for your benefit, for our benefit. So, you know, uh, I'm, when I heard about this waiver issue, I got concerned because I said, we're not going to ask the county to do something that's going to hurt the county. I mean, we would withdraw our request immediately, and we still will. If we get a report other than what I've been told, I'll be here immediately to say, and I'll put it in writing, that we withdraw our request. But if the information that's been given to me is accurate, and I'm almost 100% sure that it is, then we would just ask that you, you consider that. And that, again, you keep us in the loop. If $15,000 is, is, is too much, do what you can. Just do what you can. Uh, but we hope you can do something so we can make that same plea and say, you know, these folks, the leaders of our, of our community, in the toughest of times, tighten their belts to the point they want to make a point to you that we're doing everything we can to help ourselves, but we need your help 
as far as an endowment is concerned. So I've babbled too much. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, I, I, you know, Mr. Uh, excuse me, Joyce Oliver is here. She's the chairman of our board of directors, and she'd be glad to answer any questions you've got about the structure and composition of our board. And Lucy Broski, who is the director of early education in the Putnam County School System, who knows these issues backwards, forwards, sideways, and everything, could answer any, any questions about right. early learning, pre-K, VPK, <coughs> waivers, et cetera. And Mr. she'd Padgett, be glad Mr. to answer. Mr. Turner, Commissioner Turner has a question. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim, not too long ago, well, Mr. Padgett, excuse me, uh, not too long ago, um, we had had a conversation about maybe setting up a scholarship deal between local businesses and the Liv Putnam uh, Foundation that would allow a, a business to pay a monthly payment towards a scholarship to send one of these students to to the preschool or the, the yes, deal that y'all are doing. Have we been able to work on that any? At, yes, sir, yet? we have. We've just gotten it started, and it's advertised now on our website, and the school district uh, prepared or created a, a very nice website, which is liftputnam.org. And in the website, uh, it explains that we do have a payment program. And we've had several people that have uh, enlisted in the program, sending checks in monthly. And of course, everything along those lines is tax deductible. We've also reached out, I think this year, so far to 16 different um, uh, grant opportunities or grant sources. Um, we just got word uh, today that we got our matching fund grant uh, for, through the uh, community, uh, through the consortium of local education foundations, and we got the max that we could get from them. The max is determined by the number of kids you have enrolled in your district, and we've been awarded the max. And we, I'm gonna go pick the check up on October the 4th. It's about $26,000, but that will qualify us for maybe another two or three. Um, and we've got 100 kids that we've, we've enrolled, and that's going to take about $150,000 uh, from us uh, to fund that. But we've got some money from last year, and we're going to make it. We're going to make it. And we're going to, you know, God willing and with your help, we'll get an endowment eventually for Putnam County. At the risk of not getting another 30 minute answer. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was I, know. Just, I was just wondering. Vernon Myers basically just told me to shut up the other day at Rotary, <laughs> so feel free how to many, say anything. How many of these children are out there that aren't either being covered by ELC or Head Start or somebody that we're trying to, uh, you're trying to catch up the gap on? Is there a thousand of them? Oh, Is there I, well, 200 of them? Or? Ms. Broski could maybe address this more, but last year, I think, Lucy, we estimated because we had almost 1,000 kids in well, kindergarten, it, uh, but we Mr. only Chairman. had like 250 to 300 in Mr. Our Padgett, you're going to have to speak, you're gonna have to speak in, into the microphone. So who knows? Um, okay. Commissioner There's Turner. plenty, and we've got a waiting list, by the way. We've approved 100 because that's all we've got budgeted, and we've got a waiting list right now of almost 30 kids. Mr. Turner, I was going to ask the chairman huh? and our um, administrator to see if we could get Mrs. Broski on our next uh, scheduled workshop to give an overview and answer some of these questions. I've got some basic questions that I, I really want to know that you brought up. This is not exactly the venue to I, do I it. Absolutely. But – I mean, the very next workshop, like in a week or two, would you be available, Ms. Frosky? Yes. Uh, I you. don't know if that's, appreciate a, that. if that's a possibility. We already have an all-day workshop scheduled. Yeah, we have. It's very quite. full. But I'll leave that to Mr. Sugg's decision to make next week. Yeah. I don't know who to look at. And <laughs> I, di I didn't know if today was the appropriate time well, to come on. and continue this conversation, but I didn't want to not appear and then find out, well, gee, you should have been there. So I have an idea, but I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Popel real quick. I have a request. If you commissioners decide that you want to fund this, could you defer it to the new year and fund it out of contingency rather than try and change the budget? And at that point, we should maybe have an answer on that, uh, on that grant waiver. And, and I have an idea, too. Okay. Let yeah, me sure. share my idea. 
we have approximately 560 employees, and I was sharing this with our interim HR director. If we had a payroll deduction process where those people gave $30 a year, that's over $16,000. And, and I don't think any of us wouldn't want to invest in a lift Putnam to lift our students up. Is, is that a possibility there? Absolutely, and the school system does that now. Okay. And of course, uh, that's something that we can ask for and encourage and urge, but I imagine it would be the same situation with the county. The school system actually collects the money from the individual salaries and then they bunch it together and then they send us a check. So, um, but of course, that okay. would, of course, that would well, be Well, right now, wonderful. I think we can move forward, and we'll do it at a workshop. Probably not the next workshop, because it is an all-day event already. But well, the soon, one after that, yeah. Yeah, the soon after that, yep. we'll get on that. And we can go ahead, you know, and um, talk about the payroll deduction system, and people can sign up, and we can get that moving at, after that time, too. Is that okay with you? Oh, it'd be be wonderful. Just whatever you can do, so we can, you know, make the argument the people of Putnam County are tightening their belts and making a sacrifice, and they're doing everything we can here. Now we need your help, right, financially. Okay, but great. we've been told that'll be the first question that we're asked. We know you. We know you're needy. We've read all the statistics. We know all the bad news, unfortunate news about Putnam County. But what are you doing locally? And if uh, I have to say, well, not as much as I think we could. This commissioner going, wants yeah. to help in so. some way, some shape. Anyway, I, I apologize for taking so long. And I didn't know, again, whether t today was the appropriate time to come and make these remarks. But if I didn't want to fail to appear when I should have appeared. So You're fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Padgett. Thank you. We appreciate Thank you. It. Is there anybody else in the audience wishing to speak to this board concerning the budget? All right, hearing none, um, or seeing none, we have a decision to make. We have a approval resolution adopting the tentative millage for fiscal year 2017-2018. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? And it has to be worded very carefully. Do you have the wording there? It's the resolution. So. It's a little different in years past, but if we took on page two, well, the, the resolution itself, right. and took those, you have a number one, two, and three. Basically, the only thing missing is a motion in front of that. Am I right? Yeah, you read one, two, and three. Gotcha. As part of the motion. Okay. Um, I'll start it out. I would like to offer a motion, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair, for fiscal year 2017-18 that the Putnam County tenant of countywide operating millage is 9.8892 mills, which is 11.66 higher than the calculated rollback rate of 8.8568 mills. Do we take them one at a time? All three at the same time. Okay. All right. Additionally, the fiscal year 2017-2018 um, tentative non-countywide operating millage for the fire tax unit, municipal services taxing unit, MSTU, is 1.1000 mills, which is the same as last year's millage rate. The rate is 2.28% higher than the rollback rate of 1.0755 mills. Additionally, together, the aggregate millage rate is 10.8582 mills, which is 10.74% higher than the aggregate rollback rate of 9.8052 mills. With that, I offer my motion. Thank you. We have a proper motion by Commissioner Liable. And I'll second. We have a proper second by Commissioner Goddard. Any other comments? I, I have some, and I, I'd like to make them now, if you don't mind, while we're talking. We have a motion and a second. I don't want to raise taxes. I'll be the first one to tell you, and I don't believe anybody sitting here wants to do that. But this is an investment in Putnam County, and we've got to keep Putnam County whole. We are going to have a three-year plan to reduce ad valorem ta taxes, and we are going to have a three-year plan to restore reserves. 
We're going to commit that to the citizens of Putnam County, that we're going to work as hard as we can possibly work, grow this county as hard as we can grow, to make sure that we meet those goals. I have no further comment. Any other comment? All right. I, I agree with um, Chairman Harvey. Nobody here wants to raise taxes um, at all. Um, but like he said, it's an investment in Putnam County, and, and it will get better. You know, the indicators from, as uh, Chairman Turner was talking about, with Florida Power and Light coming online, and GP, and then hopefully just the general economy will keep increasing with real estate and maybe home starts and things like that. Um, but we have to understand also when we increase this millage rate, our taxes will go up, and it also goes up on the commissioners that are sitting here too. Uh, so it affects everybody, uh, but nobody wants to, and I sure didn't want to do it in my first year as being a commissioner, um, but it looks like there's no other way. And I do want to commend Stacey Papel and uh, all the department heads for working together to cut their budgets uh, to bare bones. And, you know, we're just getting over one hurricane, and we haven't been funded for the money that's been spent, and we have another one. And so, but... We'll get through this, and uh, we'll be better for it. So that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Pickens. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, also didn't want to raise taxes my first month in. Uh, <laughs> but uh, after studying this issue quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, I really have studied it. I just don't see another option. I mean, I've asked every every houdini trick i could think of things that you'd use in private business to get out of this situation just don't work in the governmental arena um you know i just hope that that we uh that we try real hard to, to try to find ways to in the next year or two or three like you said to actually decrease this thing and get it back not only to where it was but even lower you know through the additional revenues and through the uh, that we're projecting over the next few years. I hope we can truly do that. I agree. A low tax rate is very good for economical development. Yep. And without a broadened tax base, obviously, we'll never get out of this hole. It'll just get worse <laughs> and worse. So, anyhow. Any other comments? Tony, would you do a roll call vote, please? District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. Yes. District 4. Yes. Five. Yes. All right. Is there any other we have to adopt that we've already done? Adopt the tentative budget for. <coughs> yes, we need to adopt the tentative budget. Okay. For um, again, and that that motion would be adopting tentative budget all funds for fiscal year 2017-18 total budget all funds 116 million 825 thousand 109 dollars, and that's on number seven on that number sheet. Number seven. All right, so on number seven on that sheet. Okay, commissioners, what's your pleasure? I bring forth the motion as council stated. Well, it's right here on <laughs> number seven. Okay. So the motion adopting tenant budget, all funds for fiscal year 2017-18, total budget, all funds, $116,825,109. We have a second. I'll second. Have a proper second by Commissioner Goddard. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The ayes have it. Is there any other business to come before this board? Seeing none, this, this meeting will be adjourned. Okay.